Chris and this is my 73 through 80 grill installation video. So we're gonna start by focusing on how to take this stuff off. So we're gonna go over each piece, how it comes off and what you're gonna deal with, where the clips and screws are. Notice on this piece, we have a five and there's five places where the screws are. So mine is a 1980, so your stuff might be a little bit different, but the screws are one inch long, chrome plated, small head, T15. So these have a little speed nut clip that slides over. So be prepared for these things to free spin. They can be very, very difficult to get out. I take all this stuff out by hand because if you put power tools on there, you're likely to just bust it instantly. So you have five of those little clips. Hopefully yours are not stripped. On the removal stuff, we're just showing the difficult stuff. Anybody can figure out how to take that out. So get your two headlight buckets off. The grill comes out next. You have six screws on it. See where they are. I have never seen original grill screws in my life. I have no idea if they're Phillips or T15. If they're T15, great. That's awesome. That's what we're gonna put back in here because look how the T15 fits in there. If somebody has put Phillips in there, avoid using the standard number two Phillips and use the smaller one. And that's gonna give you a little bit easier to go in there. These screws are a pain in the butt to get out. This grill only had one screw in it. So the grill comes out from the top first. So you kind of want to push down and get it out like that. So we have six pieces of blue tape where your clip should go. This is what the actual grill clip looks like. So it just had some random Phillips screw with this kind of clip. That's not correct, but that works fine. So on the center two screws of the grill, it uses a smaller little square clip. Just get these out and replace them. So I'll have a link in the description and the end screen to my grill restoration video. Go check that out and see what I did. I cleaned the little clips up. So we have five speed nuts on the top piece and eight. Let's go ahead and get them off. These are gonna be hard. So these have speed nuts, they're three eighths. You might be able to get a little ratchet in there, but most of them, you're gonna take them off with a wrench. See if we can reach this one. These like to fall on the ground and get lost forever. I've already sandblasted and painted these black. Those right there. You're gonna need a wrench to get this one off. And it's even difficult for me to take these off. So on the top ones, you can get a quarter inch ratchet on them. So we're gonna be replacing these two. Let's check out the screws. All of these should be original and hook that thing. So we have a clear 194 bulb. These are one inch long, T15, a little thicker head on there. Two T15s, oh my. So for the parking light, signal light, these are just over three quarters of an inch. All right, so I took these out and painted them nine, 30 seconds. This is 80, so this could be metric, right? Let me go check. Okay, seven millimeter works too, could be that. So we're gonna put all this stuff on with the correct clips and screws. Just figure out how to get your headlights out. You're not gonna screw them up because they're already gonna be screwed up and we're missing a pigtail down there for the parking lot. So I live in Houston, Texas, and I get all my stuff from Outback Truck Parts in Spring, Texas. This was $10. Okay, so let's see if the new pigtail fits. Perfect, beautiful. So I guess we'll just start with putting this back in. Notice the two little speed nut clips. We have nine 30 seconds or seven millimeter screws. I went ahead and painted this white. Go ahead and snug these up pretty good. So the parking light uses a dual filament 1157 amber bulb if you have clear lenses. So the new parking lens was $18. Gasket, $4. Buddy, for $4, you could have bought a tube of caulking and done the whole truck. Just, they'll stop on their own. So we've reached our first little headache. When I was cleaning this trim ring, a tab, broke off don't worry about it we can fix it let's figure it out study it it just has some tiny little spot weld on it so we just need to 
get some JB Well, stick it, and then line it up. Okay, just mix equal parts. Mix it till it turns one color. Cleaned off really good. Okay, I also marked it in Sharpie a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and Whenever you put it on there, you're gonna notice the ring is actually gonna sit on the bucket. So it's gonna find its own height. See, so push it down. Beautiful. So for the headlight adjusting screws, I sandblasted and painted those black. And you need to get these, avoid using the square ones like for license plates because they don't have enough meat on there and they don't grip the screw enough. I've had those license plate squares on there before, adjusted my headlight and it just strips it out. These can only go in there one direction. Okay, I would put my finger on the back and just tighten it until you can feel it coming out a little bit. So the headlight adjusting spring, I sandblast them, painted them black, slide it in here. They're a little tricky to get off, but you can do it with some needle nose pliers. So if you're gonna run any type of aftermarket lights, we're gonna put these LEDs in here. Check the plug. Okay, beautiful. You see the repair we made right there? It's kind of sanded it down. Everything worked out great. So for the headlight trim ring, these are the factory screws, Phillips, coarse threads, self tappers. These are the ones I'm putting back in there. They're different threads, but we can make them work. Let's run it in there. It re-threads it. It's number eight by 32. Just a fine thread. It's a little difficult. There you go. So I might do an unboxing and review on my other channel, but I went with Octane Lighting. These are just the H6024 seven inch high beam, low beam bulbs. They've been making for a long time. These are glass. They got their little name molded in there. looks cool. This is supposed to be metal and it accepts an H4 halogen or an LED. So they were $118 shipped to my house. They come with the H4 cool blue bulb and the LED bulbs. Very cool. So anytime you get aftermarket lights, you need to fit them in the buckets and make sure they go in there straight because these don't. So that's straight looking at it. It's kind of crooked like that a little bit. So we have to modify these new parts to work. Okay, I know this is getting off track a little bit, but a lot of people are doing this and this is a real problem. So I'm bending that down. Bending it down. So at first it was like that. Now we can rotate it a little bit. Perfect. Now look at it. It's not even in there, right? So you're gonna have to play around with it. So now this is aftermarket and we modified it. Is the ring going to hold it in place? You can't have a loose headlight in there. Come on, don't be loose, don't be loose. It's loose. All right, you gotta take it back out. So if your headlight fits loose in there, you're going to either bend these down a little bit, like I did, put some foam, tape. That's all I did. Now the headlight's snug. So either put some foam right there, tape. What I did was just bend these down just a little bit. Kind of marks them up, but that's like a one minute fix. These are the Octane LED lights. Just put that in there like that. Close it. So that's up. And just kind of clock it where it... There you go. Where it looks up like that. Beautiful. We have the two headline adjustment screws installed. We have the spring pushed in there. You're going to find a little notch on the bottom of your bucket. And you're going to hook the spring. It's actually very easy to do. See, we're just trying to hook it right there. I don't think we're gonna be able to see this. It's hooked. And then you're just gonna to try to get it on the screw. It can be a little tricky. It's kind of square the headlight up a little bit at first. So all that went on there perfect with no problems. Now you need to get your headlight bucket and you need to test fit this, screw it up if you have to. You need to make sure that everything looks right and looks straight on there before we put every single thing on there. Do it now. All that looks perfect. Okay, there's the old one. I went ahead and got the one with stainless trim. Make sure it fits in there, looks good. There's no gasket. So we have a new 194 clear bulb in there. 
just kind of snaps in. Okay. It sticks out a little bit, but it looks good. So we have the 3.8 speed nuts. You want to put these on super slow so you don't strip them or bust them. This piece is very difficult to get off, but it goes on pretty easy. You barely, barely snug these up. Do not over tighten them. You'll strip them and bust them. Top piece takes a few minutes. This one, you're going to have to be a little more careful putting it back on. Make sure you got top and bottom studs in there before you start tightening the stuff down. So we got those two pieces on. Now comes the kind of annoying part. We have our aftermarket headlight door or bucket. We need to test fit it. We checked earlier around the lights. All that looks beautiful. See how that trim does not go all the way down. If we screwed that down, it's only gonna go right there. It doesn't show up that much in camera, but it looks pretty bad in real life. So they stick out. So we need to figure out what we need to grind, cut, or modify to make that go away. So we look on the inside, we have these little posts. It's almost like they gave you some meat on there to do that. So we need to grind down this one about a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, and a little bit right there. The way it's designed, it's not gonna affect anything because the bevel or compression actually works up there. So we're safe to grind some off. Nice, look at that. Well, the top one came out good. So we have the top matched up looking good. That's what shows the most, but we're having major issues down here. The regular screw, it's not angled right, and it'll never close it like that. So we're gonna have to modify it if we want it to look right. Okay, so we're gonna start by leaving this overnight, kind of propped up in place, kind of train it to go in its new position. Just gonna leave that overnight. So I've been messing with this for about 30 minutes, and I finally figured out that this headlight bucket is made wrong. Watch, we'll get this as good as we can get it. And now look up here. So then when we pull the top where it needs to go, we're gonna mess the bottom up. Just a little bit. All right, so let's just screw it all down. We're just gonna have to walk away from that. We're not, we're not getting any better than that. So 73 to 80 uses six plastic grill clips for these alien looking spaceships in two little squares. The weird looking ones go right here. And up there. And then the two little square ones go in the center. So the two screws in the center are stationary. So get those screwed in. And then you're going to have to play games and move these left and right until they line up. You can kind of look at them a little bit right here. You do the same thing like that on the top. Try to position them so we're way off. So we got everything pretty much lined up. Let's get the emblem on. So this emblem, I got it from Auto Metal Direct. It was $77 shipped to my house. It fits in there one way. Two speed nuts. All right, so these speed nuts are 10 millimeter. You just want to barely snug these things up. So as soon as you get some resistance, that's it. Putting the grill on with the T15 small head screws that came off the headlight doors or buckets because the T15 right here is skinny and it's going to fit through there. You're going to have a super difficult time trying to get a number two Phillips with number two Phillips screws in there. So use a small head number one Phillips or T15 if you have them. Remember to put the ones in the center first. So I really can't stand back any further. We are putting all this on the old dually because I'm going through my parts, trying to get everything together so I can start throwing stuff away or giving away stuff I don't need. So the next video is coming on the truck or the doors. I got those parts all over the place. They're so annoying. 
we need to get them built. We got the electric window conversion, electric lock conversion, weather strip, internals, everything on the doors, even a bodywork video coming soon. So I'll have a link in the description and in screen on the grill restoration video. And I have a bumper install video with the bumper guards I did when I first got this truck. So this video took about two weeks to make. It was a lot involved. So please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thanks for watching.